SwiftUI's Geometry Reader allows us to determine the size and coordinates of views as a function of its own size and coordinates, and it's the key to creating some of the most remarkable effects in SwiftUI. You should always keep in mind SwiftUI's three-step layout system when working with Geometry Reader. The parent proposes a size for the child, the child uses that to determine its own size, and the parent uses that to position the child appropriately. In its most basic usage, what Geometry Reader does is let us read the size that was proposed by the parent, then use that to manipulate our view. For example, we could use Geometry Reader to make a text view have 90% of all available space regardless of its content. Geometry Reader, GeoIn, then text Hello World, then frame width geo.size.width times 0.9, background color.red. That geo parameter that comes in is a geometry proxy and it contains a proposed sized, any safe area insets that have been applied, plus a method for reading frame values that we'll look at in a moment. Geometry Reader has an interesting side effect that might catch you out at first. The view that gets returned has a flexible preferred size, which means it will expand to take up more space as needed. You can see this in action if you place a Geometry Reader into a VStack, then put some more text below it, like this. I'll put a VStack here, then indent all this code, and add a height of 40. Then below the Geometry Reader, I'll say text, more text, background, color.blue. You'll see more text gets pushed right to the bottom of the screen, because the Geometry Reader takes up all remaining space. To see it in action, add background, color.green as a modifier to the Geometry Reader, and you'll see just how big it is. Now watch out for this, this is a preferred size, not an absolute size, which means it's still flexible depending on its parent. When it comes to reading the frame of a view, Geometry Proxy provides a frame in method rather than simple properties. This is because the concept of a frame includes X and Y coordinates, which don't make any sense in isolation. Do you want the view's absolute X and Y coordinates, or the X and Y coordinates compared to their parent? SwiftUI calls these options coordinate spaces, and these two in particular are called the global space, measuring our view's frame relative to the whole screen, and the local space, measuring our view's frame relative to its parent. We can also create custom coordinate spaces by attaching the coordinate space modifier to a view. Any children of that can then read its frame relative to that coordinate space. To demonstrate how coordinate spaces work, we could create some example views in various stacks. Attach a custom coordinate space to the outermost view, then add an on tap gesture to one of the views inside it, so it can print out the frame globally, locally, and using the custom coordinate space. Try out this code. Struct, out of view, conforms to view. Var body, some view. A VStack, then text, top, then an inner view with a background of green, and text, bottom. Then struct, inner view, also conforms to view. Var body, some view. This time a H stack, then text, left, then a geometry reader, geo in, and text, center, with a blue background color. Then an on tap gesture. And we'll print our global center using geo.frame in global dot mid x and geo.frame in global dot mid y. Then we'll print our custom center geo.frame in the coordinate space named custom, mid x, and geo.frame in, again custom coordinate space, mid y. Then we'll print our local center using geo.frame in dot local, mid x, and geo.frame in local. Mid y. And we'll give that geometry reader a background color of orange and do text right after it. And finally, in our content view, I'll say there's an outer view with a background of color.red and give that the coordinate space named custom. Now, the output you get 
when that code runs depending on the device you're using, but you can see my results right here. You can see the sizes are different between global, custom, and local. So hopefully you can see the full range of how these frames work. A global center X of 202 means the center of the text view is 202 points from the left edge of the screen. This isn't dead in the center of the screen because the left and right labels have different sizes. A global center Y of 455.167 means the center of the text view is 455.167 points from the top edge of the screen. This isn't dead in the center of the screen because there's more safe area at the top than the bottom. A custom center X of 202 means the center of the text view is 202 points from the left edge of whichever view owns a custom coordinate space, which in our case is out of view because we attach it in content view. This number matches the global position because out of view runs edge to edge horizontally. A custom center Y of 411.167 means the center of the text view is 411.167 points from the top edge of out of view. This value is smaller than the global center Y because out of view doesn't extend into the safe area. A local center X of 164 means the center of the text view is 164 points from the left edge of its direct container, which in this case is the geometry reader. Add a local center Y of 378.5 means the center of the text view is 378 points from the top edge of its direct container, which again is the geometry reader. Which coordinate space you want to use depends on the question you want to answer. If you want to know where this view is on the screen, use the global space. If you want to know where this view is relative to its parent, use the local space. And if you want to know where this view is relative to some other view, use a custom space.